Today we're going to talk about hydroponic irrigation and what I've got set up in the grow behind me. I've tried a bunch of different setups and this is kind of what's worked for me. What I've got set up here is pretty inexpensive. All you'll need is some Rainbird drippers. Now I recommend getting the uh, little kit that I've got uh, right over here. It comes with uh, the quarter inch hose and a bunch of different fittings and a bunch of different gallon per hour drippers. You'll also need a submersible pump. You can pick these up on Amazon. I'll leave links to uh, everything is in the video down below. Uh, these things are really cheap submersible pumps. I've had great success with them and they've worked for me for a long time. To connect it all up, you're gonna need half inch don't know what this stuff is called. I think it's made by Rainbird as well, but it's uh, just really thin wall uh, PVC or plastic pipe. Uh, it's flexible, you can bend it, do whatever you want with it. The way that I've kind of got it set up here, you can see I use shark bite fittings to uh, get this together. And then I've already had a bunch of PEX tubing laying around for plumbing around the house and I had the appropriate PEX tool to crimp. This allowed me to put uh, taps in and uh, set this kind of whole thing up. The little Rainbird drip heads go right into the half inch thin wall uh, tubing that I mentioned earlier. And off of there you use that uh, quarter inch hose and run it to whatever you want uh, to irrigate. Now the reason I use PEX tubing is the valves are readily available and I did want valves in my setup so I could take and close off and open up different valves at a time. I also use that same pump that irrigates to drain my reservoir when I need to uh, do a whole nutrient change up. Now this whole setup is pretty inexpensive. It doesn't cost you a whole lot to get it set up for irrigation like this. Now this also would work for outside, outdoors. These uh, Rainbird drippers have been fantastic. I've only thrown out uh, one or two because they've got plugged or whatever. They just quit working. But for the most part, that setup there has been running for uh, several years and it just keeps on ticking. Now I've also got two submersible pumps in my reservoir there. And the one actually just points sideways and I got it kind of stuck to the sidewall. And that's just kind of my circulation to keep everything kind of running around the reservoir. It also works out well if I'm adding microbes to it or a pH up or anything, I don't have to worry about it. The timer kicks on and uh, it kind of agitates the whole water for about a half hour before my irrigation actually kicks in. About the only considerations you're gonna need to uh, think about if you're gonna come up with a setup like this is when you're purchasing this pump, make sure it's got enough head height to get the water high enough to wherever you're pumping or irrigating to. Some of these things do better than others, but uh, generally speaking, these type of pumps, uh, they're cheap and inexpensive and they have a pretty poor head height. So your reservoir can't be too much uh, lower than what you're intending on irrigating on. That pump I doubt would do eight feet uh, of height. So just as a heads up for you, if you're picking one up. The drippers that I've got set up for my whole Dutch bucket irrigation there is uh, the 0.5 gallon per hour. They run every four hours, three times a day. So at eight, 12 and four. And that's been fairly reliable and that works out pretty well for just about any plant I chuck in there. Hopefully this helps somebody uh, get their irrigation set up up and running. If you uh, do like the video, make sure you leave a comment down below uh, or if there's something you'd like to know about this grow setup and how I make it work, let me know what you'd like to see or what you'd like to know.